Okay, so in, in this tutorial I'm just going to go through how to set up the stretcher rig on the right hand side. So we're just repeating what we did in the last video. So feel free to skip this if you think, if you're happy with applying this to the right hand side or you want to try it yourself. But I'm just following this from start to finish. So we're just going to go through setting up the stretch on this side as well. So I'm going to go to create. Um, measurement tool and just create the same measurement tool without snapping it to those two those two um, start and end of the arm I'm going to constrain this up straight away so I'll select the um, arm select the first locator go to constraint point and then select the wrist control select the locator hit G to repeat that point constraint and we'll get the hypershade up. So Windows render and editors hypershade, and we'll start building that same graph again. And because this character is perfectly symmetrical, the arm's going to be the same length. We can use the same um, length, maximum length of the arm, that same value that we used on the other side, and we can set it up in a similar way. So I'm just going to start adding these to the graph. So selecting all the joints that we want to scale, graph, add selected graph. And I've also got the control curve there. Let's move these into place. And then we'll start building this graph. So bring up the creation menu, multi, the multiply divide node, type out the condition node, get them in there. I can remember that we need the distance dimension tool, so I'm going to graph, add select to the graph, and just by right clicking on that I can see again that this isn't the one we need because there's no distance attribute there. So if we select everything, graph it, and move everything, left click and drag to the side again. So I know I want these nodes selected. And we can see here we've got the distance dimension tool, the shape, which has got that distance attribute that we need. So I'm going to move that across. And then I'm just going to select everything on the left, graph, remove selected from graph. Select everything, F to frame up and we'll just arrange this in some sort of way where it looks a bit more clear. So you don't really have to arrange things in the hypershade because the arrangement doesn't really change how the graph works, it just means it's easier to see what's going on. So I can see it's working from left to right, the distance tool is going to drive through this graph and eventually spit out a scale value on the right, so it's just more clear to me whilst I'm working on it. Okay, so what we had was two multiply divide nodes. The bottom left hand one was for the scale of the rig. Now I could use the same multiply divide node as I'd used for the right because we're only going to be scaling one rig and the rig's going to scale and the arms are the same amount so it doesn't matter too much but I'm just going to split this up into two multiply divide nodes. That way we can, if we need to, have these arms separately so if any special case we need to edit these scaling rigs or have these arms squash and stretch in unusual different ways so the left and right are different I have that already set up so it's always in my opinion good to split the left and right even though sometimes they might be exactly the same just splitting it up so if we do need to edit one side separately we can do so I'm just going to come across to this other side here. And by clicking like the wrist here in the attribute editor, I can see the multiply divide tab. And I can see a few others. So I'm just going to see if we can find the other multiply divide node. So selecting the joint, I can come to the multiply divide 4. And like we said earlier, keeping these names, this is why it's going to be quite hard to distinguish different things so we're going to go ahead 
at the start of the next tutor tutorial and just go through and rename all these whilst they're fresh in our minds. But I'm just going to select this multiply divide 4 and copy the uh, value we locked earlier on, which is the length of the arm when it's fully locked. So the length of the bones of this arm when we want it to start stretching. Because I know um, this is a symmetrical character, I can use the same values, use the same scaling values, so it's perfectly the same. And I'll paste this on our other side and lock that attribute. So what I'm going to be doing is taking the distance, so I'm drag and drop that onto multiply divide node, over, and I'm going to take the distance into the input one, close, and again this is the the second value here which is one is eventually going to be the scale of the rig which we'll set up in a later tutorial but by default I'm just going to leave it as one because the rig hasn't been scaled yet so it's just going to leave that at 18.696 so I'm going to drag and drop this multiply divide node onto the other one go to other take the output x and that's going to be the input 2 so I'm basically dividing dividing the length of the arm well, dividing the length from the arm to the control, so if the animator moves this control off into the distance, I'm going to divide that again by the original length of the arm. And that's going to be the original length of the arm times by the rig. So if the rig's been um, scaled by 2, the length of the arm will have been scaled by 2 as well. So that, that full lock of the arm will have been scaled by 2. So this is how it's going to work consistently with the scale of the rig. Okay, so now with the condition node, we want to be less than or equal to. The first term wants to be the distance, so I'm going to drag and drop, go to other, scroll down to distance, and put that into the first term. And then we want the second term to be what we've got here, this distance divided by the original length of the arm. So I'm going to drag and drop, actually it's, we need to make sure we set this to divide as well, because we're dividing the length. Um, we're dividing the length of the arm to the control by the original length. So we'll drag and drop that into the condition node, go to other, take the output x, put it into the second term. So now if color is true, we want this to be 1. So a scale of 1 is the default, so it's the normal scale. And the if color false, we want that to be want that to be the so actually we've done something wrong here if I just delete this connection here so we don't need we don't want that to be the second term because that's quite a low value I've just realized if we delete that we want the um, first term actually to be the length of the arm if we remember so I drag and drop the first multiply divide node which is the length of the arm divided by the scales the rig of the the scale of the rig. So if I drag and drop that onto the condition node, go to other, make sure the output x is the second term. So we're dividing by the length of the arm. And the output, the if colour false, so the scale the scale of the arm when it is on stretcher, we want that to be this multiply divide node, which is the um distance of the control and the arm divided by the original distance, which will give us this, the scale value we need. So I'm drag and drop, go to other, and take the output x, I'm just going to put that into the if false r, g and b. So we could just put it on r, because that's the only one we, we're using, but I'm just connected it to all three, so we can use them if we need to later on. So now we've got that set up working, so if I reduce the arm and select the condition node, we can see first term is it less than or equal to 18? Yes it is. So we're going to use a scale of 1. Let's test it again. Stretch it outside the arm. Condition node. Is 38, 36 less than or equal to 18? No it is not. So we're going to use the false values, which is increasing. So you can see this is nearly 2, and this control is nearly twice the size of the arm. So we can see that that scale is now working and what we need to do here is we added we type blend for blend color node 
and any of these remember you can find them in the utilities if you want to find them manually in this list but by not selecting utilities I'm just searching throughout all the nodes so we're adding this blend color so we can switch the stretch on and off so to do that first we select the wrist control and we're going to add that stretch control so add attribute give it a name stretch a minimum of 0, maximum of 1, default 0 let's click add so now we can middle mouse click drag and drop onto the blender and go to other I'm just going to take that stretch and to put it into the blender so this is now controlling the blender of the blend color node and we want the if color true so if so the first color is if blender is 1 when stretch is on we're going to connect that to the condition node so we'll middle mouse drag and drop we'll take the out color and put that into the color 1 and let's connect all three and hit close and then the second color if um, the stretch is off we want everything to be 1 so the scale is 1 so the default scale and now I'm actually going to switch this stretch on so we're taking the first values just so we can see these joints pop to match this scale and we're going to drag and drop onto each one of these joints, go to other and we're going to take the output R and we're going to input that to the scale X and just before I do I'm just going to double check that these joints we can see they're all orientated correctly and even though it's negative X it's still going to be OK so scale X we can see them now snapping and scaling up I'm going to select the next joint, reload right, scale next joint, reload right, scale X the last joint, reload right, scale I think I've done what I did last time and missed that first joint, I repeat the same thing again so I missed that last joint again so making sure we attach it to all scales of all joints and then we can close this so now I can see it's working, getting that nice stretch, it's matching the position and as we go below it's bending as normal if I stretch this far out then change the stretch we can see we're blending between 0 and 1, the stretch is working so you can see how quickly, the first time you might have set this up so the first tutorial is quite long because I want to go into detail how to set this up but you can see once you know how the theory works of how we need to get this arm to scale and once we know how we can create that through nodes we can quickly it's actually quite easy so just going over this graph again the bottom left multiply divide node is times in the length of a locked arm so the full length of an arm by one which later on we're going to connect to the scale of the rig so if the rig was two it would be times in 18 by two so the full length of the arm because it's been scaled up by 2 will be twice as large then that's get fed into this multiply divide node which is taking the distance between the start of the arm and the animation control so the anima the idea is, is we don't want the length of the arm we want the length of the start of the arm to the animation control so this is where the animator is going to place this and what it's going to do is it's going to take that huge length between the animation control and the arm and divide it by the original length of the arm and that's going to give us a value of how much we should scale these joints so if the animation control has moved so that if the distance is 20 and the original length of the arm is 10 20 divided by 10 is going to give us 2 so that way the joints would scale by 2 so that basically means if we, move the arm, if we increase the arm by 2 we want the arm to scale by 2 which is what's happening here so it's always going to be matching that control. So the condition node here, go, just quickly going over it again. The first term, this is telling, so I'm just going to list auto load selected so it doesn't load the control. So you can see here as we go below, if it's less than or equal to, it's going to pick 1, which is going to switch the scale off and we're going to get the normal bending of the arm. 
if it goes above the second term it's going to pick the false value which is this stretch value which we're getting from dividing these two so it's just switching between one or the other and then finally the blend color node is just blending between two values so the top value is the stretch which we set up the second value is one and this way we can switch between them so we can switch the squash and stretch on or off so there might be cases where the animator does want the IK flying off in space over here but he doesn't want the he or she doesn't want the arm to stretch so they can set that off so they can have the IK floating off and the arm not stretching and this can be t particularly useful for sort of times when you do want the character to act realistic so you don't want its arm to keep flying uh, keep stretching okay so that's just a quick rerun of how to set that squash and stretch rig up and you can see how once you've done it a few times this starts to make more sense and becomes more easier and it allows you to make more complex graph networks in future just by using simple building blocks you can create quite complex um, rigging methods so in the next tutorial I'm just going to go over cleaning this up and renaming these